We at Bruegel have been working quite a bit on adjustment in the Eurozone and what it means for economic growth and fiscal sustainability. Today I'm discussing with my colleague Joel Davas this question. One of the starting points is the price divergence that we have observed in the Eurozone in the first 10 years of the Eurozone where prices and wages have diverged between some countries by about 10 or 20, even 20 percent with German inflation and German wages typically much lower than the Eurozone average, whereas inflation and wages have grown much above average in Italy and uh, Spain, but also in France. Now, to correct that uh, past divergence, um, a sustained period of uh, reversed price uh, and wage developments is necessary, and we have already seen quite a bit of adjustment in the last couple of years. But Jolt, um, what is your assessment? Um, how much uh, adjustment have we achieved and what does it mean going forward for uh, the sustainability of fiscal and public finances in Europe? Yes, some countries <coughs> could already achieve a major adjustment. For example, in, in Spain and Ireland, and to a lesser extent in Greece, there were <coughs> quite significant fall in unit labor costs. <coughs> this is a positive, but a negative news is that most of these reductions in unit labor cost was the consequence of massive layoffs and this has led to <coughs> very high unemployment rates which causes social tensions with, within the countries. <coughs> As you rightly point out, uh, price divergences also has an implication for fiscal sustainability which is not frequently recognized because uh, if prices are corrected, this means a lower inflation this will increase the value, the real value of the debt, and this will make uh, public debt sustainability more difficult. So in an ideal situation, uh, Germany, Netherlands, and other stronger countries in the euro area should have an inflation above 2%, let's say 3 or even a little bit more, and countries in Southern Europe should have uh, a positive inflation, uh, about 1%, and that could help to restore also fiscal sustainability. And so the difference, uh, the, the, the two key variables you have to look at is, on the one hand, the difference between, let's say, the north or the core of the Eurozone and the periphery, where, as you said, in the north, inflation has to be above the average, whereas in the south, inflation and wages have to be below the average. And the other variable to look at is, of course, what is going to be the average. And we should be aware that arithmetics here is absolute. So uh, the average is always going to be just the, the sum of the average of all the different inflation rates in the Eurozone. And so uh, adjustment that is only happening in the South, whereas German inflation staying at 2%, would mean that the Eurozone as a whole would go to below 2% inflation. And that in turn, you argue, would uh, further endanger fiscal sustainability. Indeed, uh, I also made some numerical calculations when I looked at the impact on the public debt trajectory of, of Italy and Spain under different scenarios for inflation and, and primary budget surplus. And for example, I found that uh, if inflation is, let's say, 1% lower in Italy, then it has to be compensated by 1.3% of GDP higher primary surplus. So Italy is supposed to have about 5% primary surplus, which is itself quite significant. Now, if inflation will be 1% uh, lower, then the primary surplus has to be 6.3 instead of 5, which is a very large number and would necessitate further significant efforts from the Italian government and the Italian people. And those additional efforts, of course, would again have a negative in impact on GDP, on economic activity, at least in the short run. So indeed, uh, it is absolutely crucial that uh, Eurozone inflation and Eurozone wage adjustment is done in uh, around the 2%.